All set? Okay, we'd like to welcome the 2018 champion of the Fort Worth Invitational, Justin Rose, into the interview room. Justin becomes the fifth multiple winner on the PGA Tour this season. And uh, you had to fight for it out there, Justin. Brooks uh, kept the heat on you. Just comment on the victory. Yeah. Um, really, really proud of this one. This was a special victory for me. I think, uh, obviously, just winning here at this venue, I think, is really what, what means so much. A tournament that, you know, you pick up the trophy, the first thing I saw was Ben Hogan's name twice. So, uh, so it says a lot. And I, I know there's many, many more there, Jack Nicholas. I mean, the list, you, you guys know the list. So I'm very proud to be to be a part of that and then yeah it's like you say to win in the style and or the fashion in which I did today uh, I was a hard-fought victory you know to, <laughs> for Brooks to shoot 63 and not win in the final pairing took took some doing for me to, to win today so it was a really fun day to be a part of uh, glad that my A game turned up when I needed it and I'm glad that I got my mindset right to start of the day I kind of felt that I had to be as aggressive as the chasing pack were gonna be I knew that being four ahead gave them the opportunity to play very free and aggressive golf and I knew that if I came out a little cagey they were going to catch up pretty quick so I, I try to stay on the front foot as best I could today. And this really sets you up well now for the rest of the season. You move up to number two in the FedEx Cup. Just talk a little bit about your goals now going forward. Yeah I mean obviously when you're in that rarefied air in the FedEx Cup you start to think about positioning yourself in the top five for, um, for East Lake, and uh, we all know that that's a big big deal. Um, it's a golf course that I have played well at in the past so you know, to put myself in, in with a chance there will be will be huge. Uh, we have a major season coming up now as well, um, with, with the majors coming up thick and fast. So to be hitting a bit of form, at, you know, hopefully at the right time would be uh, would be amazing. All right, great. We'll open it up to uh, questions. Let's start with Bill. It's easy to say that you want to get off to a quick start and everything, but when you're really the, you know, the last guy off and all that, what goes through your head and, and how are you able to keep your composure like that and really just kind of put it out of reach early? Yeah, I mean, I was nervous out there starting my round and I think for me the biggest part of the day was the putt I made on number one. That 10-footer left to right slider, um, you know, hit a great tee shot so I had sort of done a lot of the hard work on number one and I missed it in a spot that you really couldn't miss it to the right of the green there and I couldn't afford to get too cute with the chip and actually played a nice chip but it went 10p by and to make that birdie I think was important just to settle me down and then obviously I chipped it really close at number two made birdie there as well so uh, sort of the dream start again as, as I did on Saturday and that settled me down and um, as it turned out that's exactly what I needed to do because Brooks was matching me shot for shot. All right let's go Stephen and then Drew. You talk about Brooks matching you shot for shot but I think it was number six where he blasted out of the bunker and you responded right away with the birdie putt. I mean, you know, clear, did yeah. you get a sense then that he wasn't going away? Yeah, very much so, for sure. Uh, that, that, that for me then, five and six were, were big moments in my round, definitely, to make, make a couple of key putts, to get comfortable with the putter early in my round. I felt that that was, that was really, really important for me. And uh, yeah, Brooks, when it's your day, things like that happen for you, making a bunker shot. So, you know, he looked like he was sort of having that potentially that type of day and then you know certainly when he hit that tee shot straight down the middle of seven and he had a little wedge in his hand I, I felt like he was really playing good aggressive golf and but you know it was his putting that looked so special for me today when he missed a green you know he actually hold a lot of good par putts today he wasn't always in it for birdie but um he made some really good six eight foot par putts and uh he, you know that that it looked like when he was on the green he was going to make birdie so i knew i had to keep playing aggressive and i really i felt like i really needed to play hard for that four three four shot lead all right, let's go Drew and Sean and then to the back. Okay, kind of building off that, Justin, number five, can you just talk about the importance of birding that hole after the lead had dipped to three to get it back to four on the hardest hole? Yeah, I think obviously committing to that tee shot, it's so easy to pull it left on that hole. So, I, you know, getting in the middle of that fairway was, I thought, a key, a clutch tee shot just to settle me into the round even further. And that's right between clubs. I was in between six and seven iron. I took forever to hit that one because the wind was not quite where it was. Actually, we'd always used the, the, the driving range there that had, they took all the pins out and that, that's often what we've used all week to gauge the wind on number five but suddenly all those flags were gone so had a hard time picking the wind there but like i said it was in between six and seven i went with a six iron got it pin high and making that 20 footer there was a uh, really bon you know, big bonus that, that kick started the momentum on the front nine okay sean the week as a whole where would you rank this as far as ball striking performances in your career i think it's got to be right up oh i think probably at the top um I think in 2012, 2013, I put together some pretty special ball striking. I think I led greens in regulation one of those years, and um, you know. But this is sort of back to my best for sure. 
from, from, from an iron clay point of view. And then winning here at a place so devoted to Ben Hogan, winning in this fashion, is there some extra satisfaction versus maybe doing with your short game and putting and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think so. The way I won, I think, is uh, very fitting for a place called, that's called Hogan's Alley. Uh, you know, I'm, I couldn't have dreamt it a better way, for really. I, th- I haven't seen the stats, but I'm sure I've been pretty strong appro- you know, approach to the green and what have you. And uh, you know, I putted well enough this weekend. I definitely made, made up some ground on the putting this weekend. But I think after two rounds, I was dead flat with the field. Um, at, you know, I was putting probably right on average. And uh, it was my long game that got me to the top of the leaderboard. So um, I think that the weekend was a culmination of as good ball striking and as good putting. Oh, better putting, excuse me. All right, let's go to the back. Justin, you haven't played here since, I believe, 2010. And I mentioned that Wentworth today was about 20 degrees cooler than it was here. <laughs> Don't tell me to go for, back. For, no, I'm not. <laughs> but what I want to know, the decision to come here as yeah. opposed to playing in your home country this week. It was a difficult decision, obviously, and it's one that I haven't really been able to make in the past. Um, you know, each tour has their regulations, and um, the PGA Tour stipulates you've got to play a new event that you haven't played in the past four years. Every year you've got to add an event that you haven't played in the past four. So if I didn't add this one, I was actually running out of time because I wasn't going to add anything before the US Open. After the US Open, I go back to Europe, and then we're into the FedEx Cup. So if I didn't play this week, it was really... I probably wasn't going to fulfill my obligation with that. And then um, on the European tour, they have a, a regulation that you have to play your home event. But I'm hosting the British Masters in October, which kind of gave me that little bit of wiggle room on Wentworth this year. And obviously with Wentworth changing dates next year to September, um, that's huge now because obviously I can come back and defend here without any uh, clash, I suppose. So uh, it's all turned out to be you know, good timing. All right, Steven. Justin, you mentioned obviously Hogan's Alley a minute ago, but you've wanted some traditional courses. Just talk about kind of where this ranks on some of the courses and just the feel for winning at those kind of courses that you have. Yeah, I mean, I think winning is winning no matter where you win, but if you are able to win at a course that has great history, has had great champions, um, it, and if I begin to look at the courses I've won at, this definitely strengthens that group even even more. Um, and I'm very proud of the places I've been able to win, and I don't know why that is, but you know I'm not saying they suit my game, but I'm just happy that my game's turned up and I've been inspired by some of these great venues. All right, Sean. Did you know they have a red wicker basket upstairs in the clubhouse in the Hogan room? No, I, I didn't know that. No. Okay. Um, can you talk about maybe an influence that Hogan has had on you or Sean or what you guys do in your swing at all or anything like that? Do you know, I haven't... <sighs> Everyone's been influenced by Hogan to some point. I mean, I, all coaches have anyway. Um, you know, he, he, he's done some very you know, amazing things. He's double jointed in his wrist. There's, there's certain things that he does that I, I just can't do. So um, I've never really modeled his swing per, per se, but um, you know, actually funnily enough, I, I've modeled more Sam Snead than Ben Hogan. Um, so if, if we're going old school, that's who that, that's the sort of, uh, that's what I try to emulate a little bit more just based upon on my physiology. Okay, yep, another one. Back 20 years ago when you were a brash teenager and now 20 years later, how has the maturity factor affected your game through these years? Well, um, you know, I've had four shot leads. Actually, back in 2010, I think I led the Memorial in the AT&T. No, not the Memorial, but a couple of events in 2010 and I had a hard time closing them out. I think I might have done it just by, by, by kind of getting in the clubhouse and winning by one. but. I think the maturity of being able to take these leads, enjoy them, you know, and and move forward, I think, has been a, a new dimension to my game that maybe has come from a bit of maturity and experience. All right. Well, congratulations once again, Justin Rose. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.